Hey, how's it going everyone? This is the Anime Man and welcome to The Letter. Now, this is a actually demo that uh, is created by Yang Yang Mobile, I believe was the name of the company. Uh, and they actually contacted me and said, hey, we made this really cool horror visual novel with heaps of scary elements and quick time events. And uh, can you play for us? And I'm like, that looks fucking awesome. So, if you guys want to support uh, this game, this is, again, just a demo. I believe they said it was about 15 minutes long. If you guys want to check out the actual promo for it, or if you liked what you saw today in this video, then I've left the link to their Kickstarter page in the description below. So, go and support them if you like it. Um, and yeah, I already kind of like it. It's pretty creepy. Um, and uh, this game apparently is influenced by a lot of J-horror, including... Uh, what did they say? Juon, Corpse Party, uh, The Ring, I believe they said. Anyway, some scary shit, so I'm getting ready to piss my pants. So, uh, here we go. Oh god. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate that. Fucking. The Ermengarde Mansion. It was built for Lord William and Lady Elizabeth Ermengarde. I thought they said Ermagerd. <laughs> Ermagerd! Both were well known for their compassion and generosity, never failing to extend a helping hand to anyone in need. H uh, humble ambassadors of peace, beloved by their people. The seasons of joy eventually ended when the good nobles perished at the hands of the Great Plague. Oh, that's not good. Their riches and legacy were henceforth passed on to their only child, Lady Charlotte Ermagerd. I don't want to make jokes. It's supposed to be a scary game. Come on, man. She was orphaned at the age of four. The mansion stood since the 1620s. Wow, that's quite a while. A witness to a very long history of joy and pain. After the mysterious disappearance of Lady Charlotte, the great house was left abandoned. And that is when it began. Surrounding villagers spoke of seeing and hearing unearthly things. Cries and howls filled the nights and hearsay of a mysterious woman that roamed aimlessly. People who did enter its halls were simply never heard from again. Well, that's, that's more the reason to go and check this shit out. Even after 400 years, these stories remain much like the house itself. Whispers about the once great house, its legends and its curse still fall upon the villagers' ears. However, Briar Realty Corporation is convinced that these stories are nothing more than a hoax. With little regard for the truth, the corporation decided to take place, the property, on sale. Like Pandora's box, the secrets that lie inside wait to be discovered by brave souls. No matter what happens, take care not to be consumed by the curse. Thanks! Oh boy. Ah, uh, thank you for that welcome. Hey, Jagass, good luck. Thanks. Alright, Isabella. Oh, sorry, I gotta turn my vibrator off. Hold on. <laughs> Hello? Isabella? Are you there? Where are you? Immediately I recognized the anxious, jittery voice coming from the other end. Hey! Oh look how cute Isabella is! I like her. I like her long ponytail. It's very nice. Oh hey Rose! I'm at St. Goretti High. What's the matter? What do you mean, what's the matter? It's the mansion, silly. I'm here and you're late. Jeez, we're on shift together. You promised. Oh my god, don't tell me you forgot. You were planning on leaving me to check this place out on my own, weren't you? You chickened out. Calm down. You know I take my point prom 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 oh, sorry. You know I take my promises seriously. I like to believe that, so hurry up and get here, you jackass. This place is huge. A bit too quiet since nobody's lived here since. Like, forever. But beautiful nonetheless. Why are you so surprised? This isn't the first time you've been there. I know, I just wish I could live in a place like this. It really takes my breath away. <laughs> Except for the fact that it's cursed as fuck. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Not after the rumours say that it's haunted. Jeez, never mind those rumours. Ghosts sound real after all. We'll see about that. And even if they are, which they're not, they can't do anything. They're nothing but spirits. You don't know that! They might be listening right now, and they might not be happy with you enough to... They might not be ugh, fuck. They might be listening right now, and they might not be happy with you enough to use their supernatural ghost powers to curse you. I'm a professional, guys. Trust me. No offense, sweetie, but that's a bit of a stretch. Yeah, believe it or not, it's better to be careful. Right. 
Anyway, get your ASAP, please. I'm getting bored being on my own. Fine, fine. Let me just finish up here. I'll be right there soon. Okay, see you. Bye. Bye. Rose, still charming as ever. Who was that? I look up from my phone to see Becca. Whoa, it's animated! You see that shit? Damn! Hey, good job, guys. It's fucking animated. That's definitely much better for, as a visual novel. These, these animated visual novels are becoming the thing recently, and I love it. She gives me questioning look. Oh, that? That was Rose. She's an Asian, like me. We're scoping out that big mansion down at Aslam Village. Anslam Village. So today's sort of its grand opening to the public. The corporation wants us to check it out one last time, before we let potential buyers tour it later this afternoon. A mansion? You mean that big spooky mansion you're telling everyone about? Didn't you keep telling us how it just gave you the creeps, and you have to go there? Well, I did promise Rose I won't ditch her. And besides, a job is a job. Gotta do what you gotta do to make a living. <laughs> oh, voices. She sneakers. What's so funny? <laughs> Nothing. It's just I didn't expect you to say that. Coming from you, it sounds so... out of character. I mean, no offense, but I thought you'd back out. You'd be freaking out about the place being cursed and all. Isn't your mantra, morality and personal beliefs over money? Not all the time. Because of the rumours, Briar Real Realty is desperate to sell the lot. And the agent who lands the deal is going to get a big bonus. I could really use that extra moolah. <laughs> moolah! <laughs> Mama called last night. Papa isn't getting any better and they're asking for more money to help with the bloating hospital bills. A sympathetic look crosses Becca's pale face. Yeah, she's, she's super pale. Holy shit. Life back home is tough, huh? A little bit, yeah. It would help if it wasn't the only one in the family who has a job. Tough was an understatement. The burden of feeding eight mouths and settling Papa's bills rested on my shoulders. I barely have any money left for myself. It used to be easy back when Papa was in good shape. Damn. Ever since he was diagnosed with cancer, he had no choice but to leave his job. I just wish my drunken older brother would lend a hand, but Lord knows if that'll ever happen. Fucking useless brother. I've noticed that you've been living off instant noodles these past few weeks. She crosses her arms and grimaces at the thought. Stop eating junk. They're cheap, but they're not good for you. You don't want to end up in a hospital like your father, do you? Her voice rises as she scolds me. It's clear that it's a command and not a request. I'm not entirely sure if I should be happy or annoyed. I'm glad someone's looking out for me, but Rebecca's domineering attitude can be such a pain at times. She's more controlling than Mama, and that says a lot. Yeah, I'll stop. I grumbled, but she didn't seem to care much. She gives me a warm smile. Good. Look, if you need anything, tell me, and I'll be help and I'll help in any way I can. You don't have to do this alone. Maybe I can lend you money, and you can pay me back whenever. Thanks, Becca. I really appreciate it, but you don't know. Um, but you know I'm not a fan of borrowing money. Yeah, you and your pride. But suit yourself. The offer stays on the table, though. One hundred thousand. <laughs> I nod in response. She takes a quick glance at the wall clock above the chalkboard. Well, enough chit chat. Lunch is ending and my students will be back any minute. We can catch up later. Oh, she's the teacher. Good luck with your clients. Wait, she's the teacher or? Oh, I don't fucking know. She turns to her desk, sloppily turning the pages of a rather thick textbook about Mesopotamia. I reckon she's trying to work out her lesson plan for next week. But her eyes are distanced and she doesn't seem too attentive on whatever's in the book. Oh, she's, so she's a teacher, okay. It's obvious something else occupies her thoughts. You sure you can manage on your own though? I mean, you're still a bit feverish. You shouldn't even be working right now. Oh hush, dear. Don't you worry about me. I'm just, I'll just drink some medicine and I'll be right as rain. Right as rain. I hesitate for a moment. Yeah, I hesitated too. Becca and I are neighbours. She was the first to welcome me when I moved here to England a couple of years ago. Oh, okay. Sit in England. Now we know where it's set. She's brazen, feisty, and always had many stories to tell about her students. Uh, we quickly became friends. And with my family staying in the Philippines, she filled the void and became a sort of sister to me. Becca's had a cold for a couple of days now, and despite my advice to take the week off and rest, she went ahead to work anyway. I caught her trying to sneak out this morning. Since there's no stopping her, I volunteered to drive her to St. Goretti High School, uh, where she teaches history to rowdy teenagers. Not exactly the easiest job in the world, but I guess it's perfect with a boisterous and somewhat bossy persona. Oi, Belle! 
Mm, sassy. Becca clicks her fingers, snapping me out of my thoughts. Seriously, lady, I'll be fine. For now, just go to work and stop making that rose go away for you. I'll call you if you still feel bad, and you can come pick me up if that makes you feel any better. Capiche? She gives me a reassuring smile. I sigh defeated. Alright, I'll see you later, okay? Mm. She nods. Of course. With a wave goodbye, I leave her alone to a classroom in her thoughts. Bye. Sit there. My car park- Ooh, look at those birds. Nice touch. My car is parked down the street, just outside of campus grounds. The mansion is some ways out in the countryside. As I pass by a couple of buildings, I'm about to turn on the radio when my phone rings again. I pick it up without looking. Who is it? I nearly tuck it between my ear and shoulder. Rose? Guess again. That voice. Ash. Bingo! Hey, what's up? Just checking if you're still cool later this evening. You mean that thing with Zack? Yeah, it's the premiere of that indie movie he's been working on for ages. He's really excited to watch it with his friends. And by friends, he means us, apparently. Yeah, no, don't worry. I didn't forget. I'll be there. Cool. I'll see you later. What time do you get off? Around 4... 6 p.m.? I don't know. It's the first day of open house at Irma Gerd Mansion, and we're expecting quite a number of potential buyers. I'll be booked the whole afternoon. Irma Gerd Mansion... I'm gonna sell... I can't... I can't not say Irma Gerd, because it just looks like Irma Gerd. <laughs> you know the big ja Jacobean Mansion at Anselm Village? I'm on my way there right now, actually. On your own? Yeah, well, Rose is already there, but yeah. I see. Looks like the scaredy cat finally toughened up. Shut up! I can hear Ash chuckle from the other end. I'll see you later. Drop me a call when you're done. Whatever. Bye. Stupid Ash. Backer. Always teasing me whenever he sees a chance. I'll show him who's tough. It takes a few more minutes before I finally reach the infamous mansion. Ooh, we're here. I have to admit, it does look wonderful from the outside, yet that does nothing to hide that something is just wrong. The neighborhood nearby is desolate. Everybody keeps their distance out of fear, horrified at the thought of falling under the mansion's curse. Somehow it makes me feel sad. The lack of human presence just makes this place all the more eerie than it had right, any right than it had any right to be. If it's uncanny in broad daylight, I can't imagine how this place is going to be at night. Fucking shit! Pants shittingly scary, apparently. Parking my car along the vast green fields, I make my approach. I rummage through my bags for the keys when I notice that the door's slightly ajar. Rose must have left it open. Entering, I just find myself completely aware of my surroundings. Ooh, nice interior, but definitely haunted mansion style. They've cleaned every corner, waxed the floor, dusted the antiques, searched every nook, cranny, and crevice, and made it spick and span, all for the sake of making the mansion more enticing to the modern-day lords and ladies. But no matter how hard they try, the mansion still looks as soulless as ever. Probably because there's no one living there. As though it was going to eat you alive. Oh, never mind. <laughs> if you ask me, they should just leave this place alone. Some things in the world are better left in peace, never to be disturbed ever again. Rose? I call out. Rose, I'm here. Where are you? My voice echoes softly through the hallways. Oh, am I kidding? In a place this big, I don't think she'd hear me despite the deafening silence. She could be all the way on the other side of the mansion, for all I knew. I reached for my phone and dialed a number, but... The number you have reached is not in service. Ah, oh, damn it. Not in service? What do you mean, not in service? We were just talking a while ago. It's not like she was eaten by the house, right? Or maybe the ghost did hear us talking and spirited away, right? Right? No, Isabella, don't be ridiculous. She probably wandered off deeper into the house and lost signal or something. I dial her number again, hoping to connect this time. The number you have reached is not in service. But to no avail. Oh boy. I have a very bad feeling about this. Rose, if you can hear me, please come out. Come on, Rose, this isn't funny. You know this place gives me the creeps. No answer. This isn't going to work. The place is big. She could be anywhere. I need to start looking for her. I take a deep breath before venturing on deeper into the mansion. What was that? Taking a couple of steps forward, I notice something moved by the hallway above the grand staircase. What the hell? I didn't see that. Rose? Rose, is that you? Not funny! I'm leaving if you don't come out! Silence. Not coming out, huh? Fine, I'm going. Okay, that was a lie. She's my friend. I can't really leave until I know she's alright. I dial her a number again, hoping she'd pick up this time. 
Come on, please give me something. Please, Lord. Yes, finally, came through. Hello? Hello? Rose, I'm here at the mansion. Where the hell are you? She didn't respond. I'll bite. There's heavy steady coming from her side. I doubt she can hear me. Rose, come on, where are you? I ask her again as the steady starts to settle. Attic. What? Why the attic? I think she's fucked, dude. Oh, I got cut off. Man, do I really need to go there? With how deep inside the mansion the attic is, there's barely any signal there. But why was she there? Out of all the places she could be, she just had to make me go fetch her in the creepiest room of this place. Is she doing this to get back at me for being late? Whatever, I'll just go. The sooner I meet up with her, the sooner I'll feel better about being in this place. I make my way carefully up the staircase. My legs wobble as I mentally curse the fact that I chose real estate when I could have picked up a career that didn't involve strange abandoned houses. <laughs> oh. I love- okay. I- I- I just love the fact that the whole background is animated and it really feels like you're actually part of the background, not just a fucking static image. So GG! Upon reaching the top, the grand hallway greeted me. The hallway had two wings, the east wing and the west wing. The two master bedrooms in the library were situated in the east wing. Meanwhile, I faced the west wing, which held the conference room, the theater room, and at the end of the hall, a simple wooden door leading upstairs to the attic. Unlike the grand staircase, though, the stairs that led to the attic are deep, steep, and were made of rocks. If I'm not too careful, I could easily stumble and fall. Thank god it's still daytime. With how old the place was, there was no light fixtures, and and I'd need a candle or a flashlight to make my way around. Reaching the top, the door opened to the maid's quarters. Oh, that's creepy! It looks exactly as it had been since the last time I was here, full of dust, worn out and faded by time. Did the cleaning crew miss this room? Ugh, cleanliness is the least of my concerns right now. The more pressing matter is Rose. She's not here! Bloody hell. Was I dreaming when I talked to her a while ago? Did I mishear her? No, no, it couldn't have been a dream, and I'm sure she said she was here in the attic. After all, the creepy ambience of this estate is doing such a remarkable job of making sure I stay alert and awake. Maybe this is just a prank. Or maybe that phone call was Rose's last message to me before the curse got to her. Ah, shut up, Brain. You're not helping. Don't make this scarier than it already is. But if she's not here, then where is she? That's it. I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. We must have angered the spirits living here. I knew disturbing this mansion was a bad idea. Right from the very start. But nobody listened. Be fucking realistic, they said. They think I'm cuckoo because I believe in curses and ghosts and all that. Me and my outlandish backwater country beliefs. I've always strived to be a model employee, but not this time, no. I'm turning back for the sake of my sanity. Briar Realty can find another Asian who is more fucking realistic than me to tour people around this haunted house. Before turning back, I take one last look at the gloomy old room. Huh? What's this? My worries about Rose's whereabouts must have caused me to miss it when I first entered the room. But there's clearly something on the floor. What is it? Looks like... A letter? It's a letter, lying on the ground just a couple of inches away from my feet. Out of sheer curiosity, I lean down and pick it up. Nice art! I love it! Strange, I don't recall seeing this letter the last time I was here. A few days back, a few other agents and I were exploring the mansion to prepare for today. I had been the last to look inside the attic and leave, and this certainly hasn't been here before. Someone must have been in this room since then. Did Rose leave this for me? Was she here a while ago? I couldn't have missed her though, could I? There's only one set of stairs to and from the attic. Only one way to find out. The letter isn't exactly in pristine condition. In fact, it looks rather ancient. The paper is so thin and rough. I'm worried it will fall apart if I do, if I so much as touched it. I need to be careful. I open it, and what I read shook me to my core. Oh, that's creepy! Hey. I open it, and what? Oh. What? What? Oh my god. It, the letter, is filled with nothing but the words help me, written in a crimson shaded pen. Or blood. I gulp. The same phrase just keeps on going on and on until... Send this to five people or else... Or else 
What? Or else what? As quickly as I can, I scan the back of the paper. I peek into the envelope to make sure I'm not missing out on the second page. But there's nothing. No. Oh, please no. My hands are trembling as dread creeps over me. I start to realize that the room is suddenly getting all colder. I need to get out of here. Folding the paper in half, the sight that greets me next has me frozen on the spot. Oh! Fuck me! A pair of blood-soaked feet enters my field of vision, covered in gaping wounds with skin eaten away to reveal flesh, bone, and all manner of things one isn't meant to see. Nerves and veins are exposed in a grotesque display. Eww. A foot rests at a painfully odd angle, and all the toenails seem to have fallen off, leaving only the decayed remains of infected nail beds in their way. <laughs> That's gross. I can feel bile rising in my throat at the gory sight. It's too much. All of it, too much. I want to make a break for the door, run, scream, throw up, anything, but my feet won't budge. I feel trapped in my own body, glued to the floor out of terror. The only sign that I am still alive is the loud beating of my heart as it echoes in my ears, and the tremor that continuously runs through my body. I'm definitely not breathing. Or maybe I am, but Lord knows, it certainly doesn't feel like it. I open my mouth to say something, but the words catch in my throat. I'm completely paralyzed and frozen on the spot. I want to cry. I... I don't know what I should do. Lord, please help me. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, be brave and look up, or close your eyes and pray. <laughs> I have a feeling if we look up, we're just gonna get fucked up. So, uh, let's close our eyes and pray. I shut my eyes tight, muttering fervent prayers under my breath. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Prayers taught me to be to me as a child by my mama and my papa slip out endlessly through my teeth. Because God, oh God, if you have to listen to any of my prayers, please listen to this one. And if God didn't listen, at least I won't see the thing that kills me. A cold comfort. I wait. And I wait some more. <gasps> yeah! But when nothing happens, I dare to take a peek only to find that the ghost, the thing, whatever it is, is gone. Relief washes eyes over for me as I shakily got up to my feet and back towards the door. Jiggling the door open, I slip out without a second thought and make a run for it down the stone steps and onto the hallway. I take a look back to make sure it wasn't behind me. Any other person might have stopped, dismissed it as a trick of the light and of an overactive imagination, but I wasn't taking any chances. I knew what I saw in there and I wasn't giving that thing the chance to catch me off guard. I wasn't safe until I got out of here. It was going to jump out at any moment and get me while I was still here. I told them! I fucking told them! Oh man, oh man, oh man! Racing down the stairs, a breathy laugh escapes me and my shoe slips and I find myself falling until my back hits the ground and pain racks my body. God damn it! I feel my head grow fuzzy and my vision dims even as I fight to stay awake. No. G go. Away. The last thing I see are those feet before all that I know is darkness. Oh, that's the end of the demo, guys. Sadly, our demo ends right here. If you liked it, please support the latest Kickstarter. Thank you so much. We hope to talk to you soon. GG, Yang Mobile. Um, okay, few things I can say is, one, art style is beautiful. I love it. It's like anime, but also like a stylized like cartoon as well. So it's like somewhere in between. So it's really nice. Um, and... I love the fact, by the way, everything is animated, like, even the backgrounds. You guys paid careful attention to the backgrounds and put careful details in the backgrounds, which I think as a visual novel is really, really good. Um, so yeah, guys, um, you know what? If you guys go onto the Kickstarter page, there is a place where you can download this demo as well. So if you guys would like to see the other ending that I didn't choose, then go to the Kickstarter page. Download the game for yourself and give it a go because it's definitely different watching me play it and playing it for yourself. And also, if you guys would like to support this game, then once again, go onto that Kickstarter page and support them because this actually looks like a promising game. I like it. Um, so anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this little demo um, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video, whatever I make. Thanks for watching. As always, like and favorite if you enjoy. Subscribe for any banner. Keep watching anime. Ciao!